You said that your leather making studio is like your church. It's like it's like my it's like my dirty church. It's <laughs> yeah, but it's a dirty church. I've like, oh, been like, working in leather. This or, is my dirty church. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my dirty leather church. Oh, look, dogs are happy. Hello. Look who it is, it's Drew, everybody. How did you Thanks. start doing, like, leather stuff? <laughs> Sounds weird. My girlfriend... <laughs> leather stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, my girlfriend works for a belt company, uh, making belts, and then I was like, oh, that looks like fun. And then uh, my wallet broke, I had this, like, really cheap, shitty wallet. Yeah. And it broke, and I was just like, I can make that. Well, for people that don't know, Drew Saplin is our AD, and he just came, just finished Bloodfest, wrapped last week. So, what are we gonna make today? We're gonna make a dual wielding sword belt for you. No. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's go to the church. Okay. Let's go to Dirty Church. <laughs> this cow is treated, it's called Cordovan, and everybody's gonna get mad at me on the internet because Cordovan's supposed to be horse, but I bought some cheap cow Cordovan, and that's how, Cordovan's how it's treated, I think. We worked out, so we were looking at the design of what we're building here. We worked out that where this was gonna sit because of the way that the sword that we decided to make, I decided to make, that it was gonna like be catching me in the leg the whole time. Oh right. Like if you if the sword gets behind your leg, it's just gonna like chunk so, open your leg meat. Probably so a bad we're idea. Make a, what are we gonna make it? Like a hilt or like a scabbard. Like a scabbard that's gonna accept that yeah. shape. So how does it go up to here? So how many times have you sliced into your hand? Never. Never? No, no. All right, I'm stuck. sorry I said that. The rule the rule is you keep your hand behind the blade. So. Mm -hmm. You're gonna say this and then you put the camera on it and we're like, ah, yeah. fingers. You're welcome to try to use this one. Okay. It's you'll have to take a couple passes. Basically the first thing you have to do to get a nice straight strap is to get a nice straight line. So that's this is the fun, like cool looking knife where everybody's like, oh. It's called a head knife, uh -huh. and it, it's like what everybody's been using for like hundreds and hundreds of years to cut leather. And so what I've done already is I've cleaned up the edge of this with mm -hmm. a straight edge. I've got this little chunk left. Have um, you done like a here's one I prepared earlier for me? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I have like a, yeah, this is the one that I showed you yesterday, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Like, uh, like cooking shows where it's like, and, <laughs> and look at this, it's a fully done turkey. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Just, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So if you want to go ahead and clean up this edge, you're welcome to use that. Okay. Um, I would once once you get very frustrated with this, uh, <laughs> switch to this. It goes much easier. It's way better. Okay. I can do it like this. But you don't want to do that because you put your finger. You want to keep your fingers behind the blade. So I'm left-handed. So I'm going to do it oh, that way. You. So we can actually set you up on the other end of the table if you want. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So the blade looks like you want to like pizza make some pizza. Yeah. But you only want to move it one direction once, and then you have to cut it again, you just cut it again. Gotcha. Well, let me see your hand real quick. Yeah. Uh, it fits in the, it fits in like the- Judged. <laughs> There's like her hand's a little- hand. Like, wh whose hand is bigger, mine or hers? I don't know. Seven out of uh, ten. You think I have bigger hands than you? You have, you have, yeah, that's like piano, piano player hands, basketball hands. This got awkward, guys. Uh, <laughs> you put it in the, like the little meaty part of your thumb right there, and mm -hmm. then the two fingers help you guide it. Okay. So that'll be like that. Eh. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, give me that. <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> we got a couple shots of her doing it. Yeah, that's way easier. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you want to do mm -hmm. is this thing's got a, a little razor blade inside of it right there. Yeah. So you set it on how much you want, how much how much cow you want to cut off. So about an inch and a half, and then you ratchet the top piece down here, and then you find your straightest edge, and you just kind of Wait, keep you keep work? this flat to the edge of the of the hide, right? And then you just pull down, and as you pull down, what you're going to want to do that's real sharp is yeah, and you pull up on the part that you want, so like. You'll see. So as you go, let's see if I can do this. So you nice. start a cut, right? Yeah, you start a cut. No. Oh, wow. And then as you go, you pull on this so you, this thing stays flush to the side of the thing. That's really cool. Okay. You pull on the side of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
I don't know why that's so fun, but it is. <laughs> yeah, I see why you said this is like super therapeutic. There's also, uh, there's a company called Equus Leather. They're out of England and they basically record everything with a lot of um, volume. And so it's, it turns into an ASMR video. Oh, all, really? All of these leather noises can really help. Leather noises. You like ASMR stuff? It doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I don't get the tingly thing, but music, I know what it feels like because music does that for me. The only time that I've experienced that was when we were playing this video game in Let's Gay that was just a bunch of mazes and puzzles. Mm -hmm. But the way that like, we, we, we all sat there and, and Chelsea was like, are you getting like an ASMR thing from this? And we were like, yes, it's so weird. Like just watching Colton do all these like little mazes and puzzles and labyrinths. Eh. So what I've done here is I have this little, a new, neat little pattern oh, uh, cool. that lines out the edge of a belt, which is called a, called like an egg cut or some, some shit like that. Um, and then I took my little scratch all mm -hmm. and scratched it in so that you could cut it easier. Okay. And then basically you just cut around it. Okay. So is this like kind of your weekend chill hobby? Time? Yeah, it's like turn on some music, like, Chill out, make some leather shit. Cut the end of my belt off. Yep, all done. <laughs> One belt. One belt. You're welcome. <laughs> You're so good at this. Yeah, I know. So you wear it as a necktie. <laughs> so we can make it like, like right now it's, this works, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Tight, neat, whatevs. But we could cut these little edges off right here in some cool creative way. Yeah. And then it becomes like a design aesthetic. Yeah. And now you're fashionable in the apocalypse. Well, that's what I'm going for. Apocalyptic fashion. That's my whole vibe for this is like right. aesthetic apocalypse queen. Fine. <laughs> Fine. 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 <laughs> yeah, that, that'll work. <laughs> that's not gonna make well, it. Work. Welcome to Leathercraft. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Sure. Sure. It's got a little groove that it wants to go in. Right. I'm mean, gonna just bash it. Mm hmm. Just watch the bottom of your fingers. Yeah, I got it. Alright. Yeah. So basically I'm gonna bevel up all these edges. Okay. And then I'm gonna we're gonna rivet it to this ring and then we'll go use the little uh Dremel tool, which is a huge cheat. But a it's a huge cheat? Yeah, like it's not I'm pretty sure like in the leather craft world. But you know what would be cool those now? Take life hacks. Yeah. <laughs> Check out this life hack I ordered from Amazon. <laughs> it's a Dremel tool that does this job for me. Oh, here comes a fun one too. Riveting. Now I did a little bit of riveting with the sword making. Tight. So here's a cool thing that's fun that I like to do. Okay, um, so we have our holes. We made our hole. We have our holes. And then you rivet. So it's gonna look like that. Beautiful. Okay. Shall we away to the tiny baby, the cutest little chibi anvil you'll ever see in your whole life? Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, that is amazing. That's so good. You should do this because it's a lot of fun. Okay. Basically what you're going to do is take this guy, yeah. put it on there, boom, 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 until it's all the way flush. All right. Do you want to give it some welly? Get it. What is welly? Effort. Oh. Give it, give it some welly. No? Alright. No. No. Come back over to the table. I'm just gonna clop yeah, off the yeah, end. Yeah, clop off the end there with the big cloppers. I would put it down. As much as possible? Like, yeah, there, and then you're gonna wanna use, a, it's a lot of force. Okay, and I'm gonna, as, as like, flush as possible? Ah, uh, give it like a little bit of nub on it. A little nub? <laughs> well, give it a little nub. Okay, so I want a little nub in. Just a little bit. You see? Yeah, do that. <laughs> well, I have to. So yeah. Yeah, that'll be fine. Ugh. Well, I can't do that. Keep cruising. Well, we'll come back in like 12 hours and I might have done it. Do you want me to finish it up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it will take me a little bit as well. Oh, well that was really easy for you. Yeah. I'm sure you're gonna post this video and there's gonna make all these leather workers who are like, he's not doing it right. Oh yeah. He skipped a step, that's cheating. That's cheating. I think this is a cheat. This is an acceptable cheat. It's also like a, a wacky rig. So 
so smooth. Oh, wow. um, so this is day one. Day one. Making. So this is the part that's going to go from here to here. There's a lot more pieces to go. I'll probably check back in when there's like a little more formed of it. But mm -hmm. this is really cool. So Drew's going to continue to work on this. And then, he's, at the moment, he's shaping up it's because we're going to make a hilt for the copash. We can wet mold part of it so that it form fits, so it looks cooler, mm -hmm. I guess, is kind of the bottom line. Well, and then it actually is sheathed. It's sheathed appropriately, but basically what it'll look like is, it'll, it'll look like a machete sheath, so it'll come up. Yeah. It'll basically fill in this gap right here. Mm-hmm. Morning with Drew. <laughs> Coffee with Drew. Coffee with Lessons. Drew. Coffee and leather. Coffee and leather working. <laughs> that is the most hipster show. <laughs> I was just by my bike with my final. <laughs> Next uh, time I arrive, I want you to have like a coffee in one of those like like camping. Camping mugs? Camping oh, I've mugs. Got, no, I got it here. Let me show you the look. I can do it really quick. So this is what I was hoping for with the moment with Drew. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, welcome to my studio. Let me show you around. Hi, Admiral. This is Admiral and Gus. We know Gus. These guys are playing outside. So today is leatherworking day two. The first day we learned the basics about riveting, cutting the straps, um, all the different tools that you need, all kinds of things like that. And then today, if we uh, get around to it, we're gonna finish the belt, put on the uh, little garter bits, and then hopefully the copesh scabbard. Um, yeah. So Drew, in the mean in the time that I've not been here, uh, in between doing other things, mm -hmm. how'd you has, get in? Wow, has uh, made the entire like top part of this like that we're making. It's a little. I'm gonna lay it down so you can see. This is gonna be the bit that goes around the hips that all the other parts are going to join to. Drew points out that it's a little Forever 21 right now. Maybe like a little Gadzooks, like a little late 90s. Yeah. Uh, a lot of metal. So now what, what are we going to do next? What's the next bit? So the next bit, there's two next bits. We're going to make some more buckles. Okay. Build some more of these, your favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, muscling up on the little yes. things there. The cool thing about learning how to do this is that like you have just to learn a few set skills and then you can pretty much, you can make a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So once you learn the like, the riveting, the whatever this guy's called again. Punch. Sure. Punch. Corner punch. Corner punching. All this stuff. Once you like get a really good handle on that, then you can make a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Lesson one, rivets. Lesson two, buckles. Lesson three, sew it together. There you go. And you're on your way. So we've got, look at we've got these four little buckle tentacles just kind of hanging out. <laughs> Cute. Cute. So we're gonna cut each strap into two pieces of equal length mm -hmm. after the buckle. And then we're gonna make basically four more belts. Each other piece of leather will strap onto this and then come to a point. And then the buckle itself mm -hmm. will then be, this buckle end will be attached to oh. the blank. Uh, the, whatever turns out to be the sheet, which is going to be these two pieces all carved up. Awesome. Moving on, I feel like you kind of get the gist of a lot of the stuff. Yeah. And there's a very clear pattern emerging that you like to use the hammer and the anvil. Yes. Great. So I thought what would be cool um, is that this little bit, I have these letters, you can stamp your name into it. That is cool. Yeah. You want Maine or Ellie? Or E Main. Yeah, e Main 2017. I don't know. Let's put Main. Main. Um. Yeah. M. Step aside. St <laughs> nah. Okay. Ooh, so fun. There That's is. awesome. That is my name. Whoa. That is so fun. 
All right. It's taking shape. End of the second session, we have the belt. The boy. And and these, and the garters, I guess, they're on. So next time, we're going to use this template to make the uh, scabbard. Sure. Sheet scabbard. Sheet scabbard sure the for the kopesh. And attach that to this belt, and then we're donezo. Donezo. Have donezo, fun. Donezo. See you next time on A Moment with Drew. So now I'm making the part where the katana that Patrick gave me is gonna go to attach to the, the belt. And Drew is still diligently sewing. Uh, uh, this. No time. Admiral, so excited. <gasps> it's all done. Hello. Oh my gosh. And it works. It doesn't cut. I, I believe it works. I mean, the knife isn't very sharp, but the well, belt works just fine. How long did all the stitching take? Huh? Uh, what did we talk last? 48 hours ago? <laughs> 46 hours. <laughs> no, no. Uh, two and a half hours, maybe. That's so cool. Yeah. So here it is. And yeah, as Drew just pointed out, I can like add little pouches to this, little like carry guys, a koozie. And you definitely had a koozie. The katana sword doubles as a koozie. This could be like a koozie for a particularly skinny beer. For the topo. Oh! Oh! Topo. My topo carrier. We've got to help. We've got to. We're now. Let's got to try it. it. <laughs> That's how I feel about. I feel that protective about my topo. <laughs> We're just lacing the topo into its new little <laughs> corset. <laughs> Hello, little topo. Oh, I didn't see you there. I need you though. Allow me to slip into something more comfortable. <laughs> Drew, you did it. I did it. Was it the weirdest thing you had to make? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, testing the uh, katana part of this belt, which is like with a little topo. It's like a topo carrier. Could could you want for anything more? Drew, thank you. You're welcome. And if you see this at a convention, you know that Drew Saplin of Saplin's fine leather goods. <laughs> I've been calling it Fort Sacho, but I don't have any sort of branding on the internet. Fort so, Sacho. Yeah, if you want to just follow, if people want to follow me on Instagram, mm. they can they can DM me. Yeah. Uh, request if they want something made. Ooh, that's a really cool idea. Cosplay people. Yeah, come get come get it. Come get it. Bye, Drew. Thank you. <laughs>